We hear Clive was singing, and this song was Roll Call, when the roll is called up yonder. The Tenor Saw Story. Are you a reggae music fan? And welcome to Kingston, Jamaica, the birthplace of one of reggae's most iconic and influential artists, Tenor Saw. For those who wonder who Tenor Saw is, Tenor Saw is generally regarded as one of the greatest voices of the dance hall era. At the age of 19, he ruled the dance hall scene. Like too many artists from this period in Jamaica, Tenor Saw died too young. His lifeless body discovered on the side of a Houston, Texas freeway in 1988. Would you like to hear more about this greatest inspiring musician? So, stay with this video to take a closer look at the life and career of Tenor Saw videos. Let's dig in. Tenor Saw, whose birth name is Clive Bright born in 1966, in Kingston, Jamaica. His mother was a church-going lady, and it was in church that young Clive first exhibited his singing skills. From a young age, Tenor Saw had a passion for music and a natural talent for singing. He went there and while he was down there for a few months, he keep coming every, coming every Sunday anyhow, and he would get his clothes and his money and his meal and he went away sometime when he come on Sunday, I would sit and talk with him and say, Clive, why you don't come home? Why you staying down there? Why you prefer down there? And you know, he never wanted to give me the reason, but I did not know that this was his reason. It was then about some time after, I understand, somebody come and said to me that, Miss Cherry, you don't hear Clive have a song on the radio singing. I say, I laugh and I say, you get that from? And the person said, yes. We hear Clive was singing, and this song was Roll Call, when the roll is called up yonder. And then it was like a day after I hear the song myself on the radio, and I couldn't believe it. You know, I begin to laugh in my heart and say, what? You mean to tell me this was his plan I did not know? But because he had the mind for me, was small growing him, loved to sing, and everywhere you take him and him, they would put him in program and they would sing, they cheer him and say, once ago I was at church one. Knowing that his religious mother would not approve of his musical ambitions, he went to live with his father in another part of Kingston. He would still visit his mother, but she wondered why he preferred living with his father. Mama Cherry had no idea her son was pursuing music until a friend told her that they heard one of his songs on radio. That song was the religious-tinged roll call produced by George Fang and released on the Powerhouse label in 1984. In the early 1980s, Tenor Saw caught the attention of producer Henry Junjo Laws who recognized his potential and signed him to his label. Under Junjo's guidance, Tenor Saw began recording his first singles and albums. It was in 1985 that Tenor Saw would get his first big hit with the song Pumpkin Belly on the Sling Tang River. One morning about 6 o'clock I wake up and look outside. Say look at youth sit on a stone and say boy somebody sent him here that I was promoting youth and music and he had some music, you know? Well, his style was... was it was a nice style, his voice sound very unique to me, so I thought that he had a big chance, you know, being a big star. So he started singing on the youth promotion sound system, because you know we have a sound system that try to popularize the youth. <laughs> you know, he had some good lyrics and the first song that made a big impression on, on the public was a song called Punkin' Belly, which was originally done at a dub plate, but later on was put out by Prince Jammies. Because youth promotion, we generally recruit the youth them, you know, and put them out. So that was one of the first recording and roll call for George Brown. The song was a cultural anthem in Jamaica and helped to establish tenor saw as a major force in the dance hall scene. It was played on every sound system, radio station, and dance hall across Jamaica, and it quickly climbed the charts. That same year he would record. Arguably his biggest hit ring the alarm on the Stalag 17 rhythm. These songs, popularity was not limited to Jamaica. It soon spread to other Caribbean islands, and even to the UK and the US, where it was embraced by reggae fans around the world. Despite his success, Tenor Saw faced many challenges throughout his career. He struggled with poverty and financial difficulties, and his personal life was plagued by legal issues and health problems. However, despite these difficulties, he never lost his love for music and continued to perform. Hang in there guys. This was just the beginning of Tenor Saw's story, but it was a story that would be cut short by an untimely death. 
Tenor Saw was in high demand and enjoying the success of his most recent albums. With each new release, he solidified his place as one of the most innovative and influential artists in the world of reggae music. He collaborated with some of the biggest names in the reggae scene and produced hit after hit. In addition to his album releases, Tenor Saw also began touring extensively throughout Jamaica and other Caribbean countries. By 1987, he was touring extensively with reggae legend Freddie McGregor. He was known for his high energy performances and his ability to connect with audiences, and his shows were always packed with excited fans. Tenor Saw's music resonated with people from all backgrounds and walks of life. He was a true ambassador for reggae music, and his touring helped to spread his message of love and unity to audiences around the world. His unique vocal style and emotive performances made him a favorite among reggae fans and earned him the nickname the Crown Prince of Dance Hall. The popularity of his music was also growing in the US and other countries, and his international tours helped to solidify his status as a true reggae legend. According to his mother, he fell in love with America and would spend more and more time in the US. Tenor Saul left Jamaica for the last time in 1986. In 1988, Tenor Saul was signed to Ross Records with the hopes of releasing an album. When it was time to record, Saul was a no show. But this successful career journey had come to an end on the 6th of October 1988, with the tragic death of Tenor Saul. Between the time of receiving injury to the time of death, this meant that he was out in the open, suffering from injuries for hours, if not for days, before death finally came. Tennessee could have been killed by a swindler and murderer, or by a hit-and-run motorist. Some people are speculating that it could have been drug-related. The moral of this story is, however, that young singers need a manager, someone to look after their affairs, to know where they are going and to whom. In 1985, Tennessee received outstanding praises for his performances on Rockers, Dancehall, Four Sounds Clash, and Sunsplash. He also received the JBC Certificate of Recognition for his contribution to the development of Jamaican music. Mrs. Dolores Elson's idol has been shattered. Her earth star has fled. She now console herself in the fact that in his short life he made a significant contribution. Her whole life she will now spend trying to know why he died. He was only 22 years old when his lifeless body was found on the side of a road in Houston, Texas. Tenor Saw suffered broken limbs and injuries to his head. A hit and run accident was deemed to be the cause of his injuries, but they could have just as easily been from a merciless beating. Over the years, many rumors have circulated, and many opinions put forward as it relates to Tenor Saw's death. The most popular is that he was a victim of a hit-and-run driver. Others believe he was swindled and then murdered. Some say he was involved in drugs and that his murder was drug-related. Some think he owed the wrong people money for a show and was killed because he took the advance but never performed. Another story said he was murdered by promoters who didn't want to pay him for a show. Probably the saddest and most cautious rumor is that he was killed by his friends and his show money stolen. How did Tenor Saw end up on the side of the road in the first place? Who was driving the car that allegedly hit him? Why wasn't there been more interest in this case over the years? Those are just a couple of questions that remain a mystery to this day. His death was a devastating loss for the reggae music scene, and his fans around the world were deeply saddened by the news. Tenor Saw had already established himself as a major force in the reggae world, and his death came as a shock to many. Despite his brief career, Tenor Saw left a legacy in the world of reggae music. His music continues to be popular and influential, and he is remembered as a pioneering artist who helped to shape the dancehall genre. Tenor Saw's music was loved by people all over the world, and his death was a loss to the entire reggae community. His death was also a loss to Jamaica, as he was a great ambassador for the country and its culture. His music, lyrics, and performances reflected Jamaica's history, culture, and society. He was a true reggae legend, and his legacy will be remembered as a defining moment in the history of Jamaica's music. Tenor Saw's career may have been cut short, but his legacy lives on. He left behind a body of work that continues to be celebrated and remembered today, and his music continues to have a significant impact on the world of reggae music. Tenor Saw's music was infectious and memorable, and it resonated with people from all backgrounds and walks of life. His high-pitched singing style and catchy melodies helped to establish him as 
a pioneering artist in the dance hall genre. Tenor Saw's influence can be heard in music of many other artists who came after him. His style and sound were unique and innovative, and they continue to inspire and influence new generations of musicians. Tenor Saw's legacy extends beyond his music, and he is remembered as a cultural icon in Jamaica. His music, lyrics, and performances reflected Jamaica's history, culture, and society. He was a true ambassador for the island, and his legacy will always be remembered as a defining moment in the history of Jamaica's music. Tenor Saw's music continues to be loved and celebrated by fans around the world, and his legacy continues to live on through his albums and the memories of his live performances. He was a true reggae legend whose music will be remembered for years to come. To truly understand the legacy of Tenor Saw, it is important to listen to his music and watch his performances. His emotive delivery, powerful messages, and unique style are evident in every song he sang, and his performances were always full of energy and passion. His music continues to resonate with fans all over the world, and his influence on the reggae and dance hall scene will never be forgotten. So, this is the life story of the crown prince of dance hall, Tenor Saw. He will always be remembered as a gifted artist whose music touched the hearts of people all over the world. His legacy will live on forever as a true reggae legend. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for a more interesting videos like this. Thanks for watching.